This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the November 23rd, 2021 meeting of the Wethersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you're proposing to do and for us to ask you any questions. <laughs> The commissioners may voice an opinion or a suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Wethersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wet wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin your construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission. Wethersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 7006-21, renewal by Anderson, seeking to replace seven windows in home with renewal by Anderson, double hung windows with white exteriors and no grills at 396 Main Street. Application 7007-21, PK Windows LLC, seeking to replace 21 windows in home with Anderson wood right double hung windows at 75 Center Street. Application 7008-21, Michael and Marissa Pareto seeking to install five foot high stockade wood fence on right side yard and also split rail fence around rear yard at 120 Hartford Avenue. Application 7009, Anthony Costello seeking approval for GAF Fortitude shingle line, not currently on the list of pre-approved shingles in the district to be installed at 16 Church Street. Application 7010-21, Gold Restoration LLC, seeking to replace windows in home with Marvin Elevate in bronze color with some same light patterns at 161 Garden Street. Any residents interested in viewing an application, speaking on an application, or anyone wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 4 p.m on the night of the meeting. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the correspondence. Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized dated at Wethersfield, Connecticut, this eighth day of November, 2021. Thank you, Chris. We've got a full set of commissioners tonight, so no alternate voting unless someone feels the need to step out. Um, otherwise, we'll get started right away. Application 7000-21, the application for 161 Main Street. Hi, how are, how's everyone doing? Uh, Good. Welcome Bryce back. Hardy, thank you. Uh, we hope today is a productive meeting and we are here. I'm Bryce Hardy, 297 Hartford Avenue and uh, also representing the Charles, 161 Main Street. I'm here with Joe Urso, who is my engineer. And uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Joe to kind of uh, do another outline of some changes that we've made. We're really excited about some information we got from the Liquor Commission, um, uh, not needing a fence in the front yard. Um, they have told me that all I need is a, a, um, a defined border. So we think we've come up with a really great way to do that. I think that the commission is really gonna be excited about that. Um, I know I am, I think um, it's a really, uh, it's a, a great option not to have kind of even for my own guest a corralled look of, uh, you know, we're not gonna be fenced in. So I think that's a, I think everyone's gonna really be, be happy with that. Um, and so I'm gonna turn it over to Joe. 
to uh, go over some of the details that we've created. And uh, Joe. All right. Thank you very much, Bryce. Um, okay. Uh, my name is Joe Urso. I'm from SLR. Uh, engineer, professional engineer, Connecticut, and um, I'm here to discuss the Charles Restaurant outdoor patio. If I may share my screen, um, I'd like to run through host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay. Um, would you enable me to share a screen? You should be all set. Oh, here we go. All right. Are we good? Yes. Yep. Okay. So we've got the old render here. Um, but just for any commissioner that is not familiar with the project, um, this is for a proposed patio. Um, we're looking to maintain the pedestrian friendly area um, and continue to build on the old town Weathersfield overall community character. Uh, we're looking to add an outdoor dining opportunity while maintaining the appeal of the historic district. Um, but yeah, the, the goal here, Bryce's goal is um, to select materials based on the existing architecture while respecting the village business district of Weathersfield. So we are looking to maintain this lawn area in the uh, in the existing in the existing lawn, you have like an L-shaped um, remaining for the grass. Um, we had a fence here. You can see that is now uh, a landscaped area. So I'm just going to jump right into the new plan. Um, so now the the fence that you saw in previous meetings, we now have a landscaped bed with uh, different plantings. Um, the plant schedule is down below, but you'll see some um, boulders and a tree. And then you do, we kept an access gate right here for the lawn equipment. Um, this gate is three feet tall and it does keep the same material that you saw before for a, a fence. Um, and then you continue on with a landscape border over here up to the lower patio, which continues a different type of landscape border to create the privacy um, for the lawn area. And we also on the main entrance from Main Street, we remove the fencing in between the stone piers or bollards uh, replacements. Um, so now it is a landscaped border along the walkway, as well as um, down below at the family, we call it the family table over here. Um, on the main street side of the family table, we, we have a new landscaped area without a fence over here. Um, we do keep the fencing along the entire walkway, as you can see where my cursor is for guests to enter into this entrance over here. Um, we keep a four foot tall fence, as you saw before, to uh, blend well with the stone piers, which are four foot four inches high. And um, we did keep the, the stone wall in the back um, for uh, privacy to the guests on the patio from the parking lot and you know car lights and uh, and that fence does have a two foot fence topper that will match any fence that you see around. Um, we, we did retain the gate that we uh, initially proposed in the back. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much summarizes the changes. Um, we did add every dimension that you guys asked for, the lower patio, the, the main patio and the, and the family table patio, um, as well as dimensions for the pergola. And uh, lastly, we show the, the alignment of the string lights as I'm tracing with my cursor right here and a height of the string light pole. Um, so these are the string lights, this is the pergola. 
Um, we move forward with cho choosing a um, uh, type of pergola shade sail. And um, obviously this is not the, the pergola that we're choosing. This is a, a white um, pergola, but our pergola uh, is proposed as um, six inch by six inch cedar posts. You see on the new detail sheet. And uh, the pergola is 21 by 24. It's nine feet tall underneath. And as you can see, we've got the uh, string light pole shown here at 10 foot tall. We have the shade sail over here that you can see on the next slide. And um, this is base. This isn't for a, a pouring rain. You know, this won't block you from pouring rain. This is good for a drizzle. Mainly what Bryce and company is looking um, to get here is a, a shade from the sun. Um, and the type of fabric we're looking to get is called Harbor Time Edge. It's, um, it's, it's very good for heat reduction and exactly what they're looking for here. Um, this is the color that they're looking for, antique beige, it's called. So comparing to this picture, I guess the color would be slightly different, but um, you know, they're looking for something to blend in with the wood, the cedar wood frame that they have for the new pergola. Um, we will have down, down lights uh, mounted onto the pergola that you see right here. And I think that really sums it up. I guess I could show you the detail sheet if anybody missed, you know, if anybody wasn't here um, at the last meeting, this is um, generally what you'll see for the string lights. Um, all the specifications are here, how many lights there are on the strings. Um, and then, you, you know, you got the pier, you got the knee wall and uh, the, the fence topper on top of the stone wall. All of the stone will match. You'll, ha you'll have the stone wall in the back against the parking lot to match the knee wall, to match the piers. So that pretty much um, sums it up. And Bryce, I will leave it. Oh, yeah, I'm, gonna say, I'm just going to butt in a little bit. Um, so in conclusion to kind of what we're proposing today, that was a change from the last two meetings is that we are here with a complete set. Uh, we are proposing the exact materials that were presented to the commission uh, on the steps of Kim's house. Uh, we are proposing the pergola, uh, which will be a cedar material and that shade sail. Uh, Joe has done and his company have put together the dimensions that you guys are looking for. If you need help with uh, deciphering some of those dimensions, which I think are clearly um, on the plan, we can help you with that. Uh, the knee wall is at its highest point, 2.3 inches. 2.3 uh, feet. I'm sorry, 2.3 feet. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that does have some a difference in elevation because the yard is elevated differently. Um, we are proposing that one fire pit on that lower patio to the uh, patio center street side. Um, and the string lights are the same string light that we proposed throughout. Uh, there's a slightly different uh, connection, but we thought this would be a better uh, way of figuring the lights to kind of cover the amount of patio space that is out front. Inside the patio, you'll see that there's some down lighting. It should be a really low, uh, it should not have an effect on outside of the patio. It's, it's shot down to the ground. Uh, you know, we really think that the lighting shouldn't be too much of a, a conversation here. Uh, I can, I'm concerned about, uh, you know, my diners, there's not gonna be a bright environment here. You know, we're trying to make sure that everything is, uh, is really nice. So uh, I, I don't think that's too big of a concern. 
uh, in the like parking this. lot. Go ahead and finish, Bryce. I'm sorry. On the parking lot side of the the back wall, you're going to see plantings that hide the wall from any of the residential neighborhood. Uh, that wall is only four feet high. That's it's not that high, and then it comes to a fence where you can kind of see through. Um, we think this has a low impact on the neighborhood. I think without that fence in the in the front, I think you know the landscaping and everything kind of makes a lot of our structure go away. And and any structure that we have, we've thought about, and I think is necessary for our guests, our guest safety, and uh, just a, a a natural flow, and our and our staff safety, and just a natural flow of a of a restaurant. So. We're really excited to bring this to you guys as our final meeting here. And I hope that you have seen that we've done a lot of work to take your ideas into consideration um, and find the best thing that's, that's right for uh, historic appropriateness and also our neighbors and our business. Great, I think the um, fence is good news from all our perspective, because I think some of us were struggling with how that was gonna look, especially when we thought it had to be four feet tall. Can you call out for us what those plantings are um, on the front side and then down the sides? Because um, part of the problem with having these miniature size plans is that even with my glasses on, I couldn't possibly read that. No problem. This front side along Main Street? Yes. Okay. I'm the engineer, not the landscape architect, but I'll do my best. All right, we've got PA and IS along here. So the PA are fountain grass. The IS is inkberry. And then you have some, so that takes care of fountain grass, inkberry over here, if you could follow my cursor. Okay. More found grass around the boulders. Ink, inkberry is like a holly type uh, shrub. And then you have black eyed Susans back here. And I believe these are more fountain grass over here. And I could keep going along the whole perimeter if you want. Yeah. What are so what's down the side <laughs> over here? Is, yeah. Yeah, over here you have um, California privet. And then when we're looking um, on the walkway that leads up from the Main Street entrance, over are here. those? Again, these are grasses. Okay, so the grasses, and Claire is a master gardener, so she can do <laughs> this better than I can. Um, how long are those actually going to be in a shape where they're providing coverage. You know, like for instance, along that walkway in particular, we've got those four and a four foot four or whatever they are, the posts. Yeah. And yeah. the grass will be tall at some point, but a lot of the time it won't be or it won't be there at all. Yeah, Jen, the, I, I, if you don't mind, Joe, I, I'm happy to run through the plants fast. Perfect. Um, the inkberry, the ilex glabra on the front, um, where the ward lawn is, those are evergreen. They're going to be about four, maybe five feet. It's a loose kind of billowy evergreen. It's not like an American holly with that much density. Um, everything else on the plan is deciduous. Um, they're perennials, and they will, the grasses will they'll be pretty maybe right now, but they will not be there through the winter or through the early spring. They'll get cut down and need to grow back. On the far left along Center Street, those that privet also was deciduous. So that will drop its leaves and, you know, be bare sticks for, for the winter and then um, come back out. Um, but yeah, the only thing that's evergreen is that, is that um, Ilex glabra on the front. Yeah. Okay. And then Perfect. along the back wall, what are those? Those are grasses as well. That shield the parking lot from the... Yeah. It's a very pretty grass. Um, they have it, uh, it's, it's at, um, as you drive into uh, West Rooms Mall, they've got it. it. Used to have it down by the Hartford too. 
Because it's a grass, but again, that's going to go away for the winter and for the spring. Right. And then the plantings that are along the knee wall, are those on top of the knee wall? Yes. Well, no the knee are... wall is it's standalone and then it, it's a it's a knee wall and then it goes down to a planter. And you what are those? Both. I'm sorry. So, so explain. I haven't, didn't pick up that piece. A knee wall that goes down to a planter. Yeah, those are dwarf fountain grass. And mm -hmm. uh, oh, I want to see your planter. Yeah, you've got a planter right there. Yeah, so it's behind. Have... It's behind that, and that's going to soften the wall from the inside. The diners are going to see that. It will not be able to be seen. It's quite short, so it will will not be seen from any outside vantage point the any sidewalk and that's a, that's again not it's not visible probably with the knee wall but um that's deciduous that won't go away and the reason why we have to have that planter on the inside not that it makes any difference to the visual aspect of this is is that's where our drainage is going to go and that is necessary for planning and zoning Are you talking about a foot difference between the planter and the height of maybe the highest grade or slope? So you will get some of that plant peeking up over that wall, I would imagine, right? Yep. It's a little, maybe. Let me just ask a question to make sure I'm understanding this. Um, the walkway that comes from the main street onto the patio on that left-hand side, is there a fence there or is it just a fence? Right here. Section? That's correct. No, we took the fence out. We used to have okay. a fence between these piers. Okay. And we took the Let fence Let me out. ask, do you have to have a fence? Is it necessary from a functional perspective to have the fence uh, in the next section as you walk into the patio? I think Bryce was looking, for, Bryce, you can speak on that, but I thought it was uh, to separate walkers in from the diners. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a, a nice, I think it's, I think it's necessary to have a, a break in a, in a walkway through a dining space. So people don't walk through here. They kind of follow sure. the mean. Makes perfect sense. And, and let me just say, since we, I didn't, you know, this, these are great plans and we are so pleased to have a full set. Um, it's really, really helpful to have the measurements. In fact, we should never be approving an application without them. So thank you. And it's, it's, it's as Jen said, it's great news about the fence. Um, I'm just wondering, um, you know, the sections of fence there, could you, you've got the posts which you need for lighting, could you just do little swags? Does it have to be that fence there? Just curious. Or at four feet. Is it going to be four feet? Yeah. We thought the four foot fence um, fits well with the stone pier at four foot four. Yeah. I actually agree with that if you've got the piers, but you could, again, you could just do this sort of a loop stanchion. I'm just curious your thoughts about that. Yeah, I think- Give this, me more about, it. what's a loop stanchion? What's well, that idea? you two stanchions with, with the, the drape of some material between the two of them rather than a rigid fence. And so it would give like you some scout. definition. People aren't walking in it, but it's not the rigidity of a fence down a pathway. Would that material that you're thinking about still be a fence? Whoops, sorry. Um, Bryce, she's saying instead of the top being straight and flat, they have fences no. that kind of dip I'm down. I'm sorry, right? that's not what I'm, I'm saying, but that's oh, okay. a good thought. Let oh, me, that's what me... I was thinking about. You were mentioning it. That's what yeah, I yeah. thought you were just... Let me see if I can articulate it. You know how when you go into the theater, they have, um, or into entrances, a museum will have it. They'll have these, um, sometimes they're velvet, uh, pieces of material oh. that go in between and scoop something along those lines instead of a fence. Chain. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll uh, look into that for sure. I just just wondered. All right. So, in the uh, fence material that you're proposing on that side, that's still the the aluminum fence. Yes. In black, correct? Correct. Matching the fence topper, yes. Yeah. And then the gate that's over on the center street side for coming in for landscaping, that is aluminum, an aluminum black gate as well. Yeah, at a lower height. 
which is what do we decide on Joe? Is that a three foot high? Yeah. Yep. And that is to continue the defined space that's required by the liquor control and access for equipment into the, into that area. Sure. You have got to get a lawnmower in. Right. Well, uh, what's interesting though, is those grasses are not going to be there for a big percentage of the time and you'll have a gate floating in between. Actually, Jen, to be honest, you'll have the privet year round. There'll still be a landscape mulch. Yeah, and the privet year round, you'll have, you'll, have, you'll have something there. It just won't be green. And then if you look, the, the gate anchors um, on the south side into a boulder. So it, it may make sense. We've got a tree there too. Right in front, yeah. So Bryce, can I ask um, how necessary is the knee wall functionally? Could you replace that with a privet head, with a clipped hedge of evergreen hedge to give some definition? Uh, I'll defer to Joe, but I'm pretty sure it's very necessary. There's a 2.3 foot drop in elevation from the base of the building to that, that part. So to have a level, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but to have a level patio, there needs to be a containment of earth. Yeah, but I mean, could you just put a hedge down below that to give you the definition? Yeah, of course, we could just make this like a cinder block concrete wall and then hedge on the outside. Um, sure. But okay. again, we want to have like uh, decorative lighting pointing to the grass from this um, from the wall and we thought that a decorative wall with with stone would uh bring the feel and it'd be inviting um whereas a hedge i don't i mean i, I suppose you could have just shining lights sticking out from the hedge well uh, again in my opinion in the, in the landscape architects that's what we uh show us to go with i'm sure it would save a boatload of money too just going with hedges and, yeah. and floodlights it would really lights, reduce 20. the, it would substantially reduce the amount of the, the stone, the faux stone facade material that you're requesting. So it would, there'd be much, much less of it to be seen. Um, so I just, just floating some ideas. And my, my only question there is, would you I be know. creating a safety issue? You know, if there's not that knee wall for that step down and there's just shrubbery, I mean, someone could like, step off of there and you open yourself up for a lawsuit yeah they'd have yeah. to have he's as he said they'd have to have some kind of something but but not decorative and hide it with a hedge yeah there'd have to be something there to protect people from falling over there it's only a two i mean it's only a two foot wall so you know i mean you have a two foot hedge yeah, I think this 12 inch high um, step up would keep the kids sitting and uh, staying in their, you know, dining area, or, you know, some may want to come over and look at these grasses. Some kids might walk right through and fall over it. Like you said, I mean, I think this step up, it gives a defined step up with like you can see right here, GFI outlets, and, and we also have lighting pointing over. Um, but you're saying maybe have a wall go up here and then hide it with additional hedges out here. It, it may hide the stone that some may not like, but um, it's also going to hide the lighting. So I think that we're meeting the goals that... Um, you know, that the, that the lawn, the people who hang out on the lawn would want and the diners would want. Um, you have a lot of lighting though. You've got, a, you've got lighting in the um, pergola. You've got the string lights. Um, you've got a lot of lighting out there. Um, again, I'm just, I'm just looking for some ways to reduce the impact of that faux stone facade, which the largest place of it is that's that, that knee wall. 
um, that's really up front and center. So just, just looking for some, some options there. We can talk about it in more detail when we get into the hearing or leave the hearing in, into the meeting. One more thing I could add. Um, so this knee wall is approximately zero inches right here tall. And it's approximately 10 inches right here mm -hmm. tall. So mm -hmm. really it's not going to be that drastic of a knee wall. Um, over here, it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's tw it's 12 inches high. You're, you're not gonna see um, the two foot three <laughs> that you're gonna see at the maximum height over here from, from Main Street. So if I was to go over here, your grade is right up here. This is the max grade right here. So grade on each side of this knee wall is the same in this location. Mm -hmm. The spot grade is 39.6 on the patio. You can, it's flush to the grass. So all, all you have is the steps so people don't uh, walk off of the patio. So it's kind of a barrier. Mm -hmm. So it's 12 inches high here. Just to give you a, just another idea of, of you know, I don't want you to think that this is a two foot high wall looking from Main Street as you drive by every day. It yeah, is. it's it's visible from Main Street, though, from any as you come is I guess it's east on Main Street. You're going to see the whole the whole other side as well, though, too. Absolutely. So, yep. Would you would you be willing to do some um, plantings, though, even, you know, if you left some space for where the light comes through? I think that if you softened that wall with some plantings on the front, you know, front side and then down running down the edge. Well, I mean, they'd that, have to be, yeah, they'd have to be an evergreen with a whole lot of coverage. You have to kind of hide it. Why don't we just put, I mean, so what you're saying is take away the decorative, dec so what you're saying, Claire, is let's put a cinder block wall with plants English on the English. outside that just hide an entire <laughs> patio. Classic, that's great. Um, is that what you're saying? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying so you to, want me to some... you want me to take away any detail and put in cinder blocks and put in plants. I, I'm not yeah, trying we to could get do frustrated that. here, I mean, it, it would look... but I don't understand why the, so I think Claire, what you think is the, the faux facade that we're putting in is too modern. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So I'm not going to let this, this application get denied. However, I think you're missing a very, I think what you're missing is that there is, needs to be some co contrast within this patio. And we have an entire walkway from Main Street and on, on Main Street, that is brick. You have a, a walkway going into the patio that is brick. You're gonna have an entire facade inside on, as pavers as brick. You have a, a firehouse that's brick. You have a, a, a building across the street, the historical society that's brick. I just can't imagine that the brick is the correct answer next to a wooden house that doesn't have any contrast to what we're that to to the now almost doubled maybe tripled greenery that we're putting in if you want to see more evergreens and less grass that might be something that we could be looking at but I don't I think and no offense in all due respect in our very first meeting in a pre-preliminary process in this, in this application, what the commission told me is to put it in a natural product. And so that's what my wife and I chose. And all I heard from that first meeting is to make sure that there's consistency through the products. And I believe that's what we've done. And so to, to want to soften a wall that's only 2.3 inches high at the highest point, I just think we're spending too much time on that. And so I, I don't know, I, that's, what we're, uh, that's what we're proposing. And uh, I hope that's not what holds this whole project back, but that's what we're gonna propose. Okay, thank you. I mean, yeah, if everybody feels that's appropriate, then we'll do whatever the commission want, would want, but um, we're open to listen to everybody. 
Hey, Bryce, quick question. Yes, Do you anticipate people sitting on that knee wall? Is that is that seating in, in the future? You think when people are out on the lawn or potentially that a hedge would prohibit that or? I do, I, I, yeah, Chris, I do think that any wall could potentially be some seating. You know, I can imagine kids running around in this lawn and a parent wanting to sit down and watch them. Um, right. That's not going to be something that is in our seating chart. But no, I, yeah, I understand. I do, but, yeah. I, do, I do think that that's going to be a very fun spot for our community to, to enjoy. And yes, I do see people sitting on that wall. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions about the new stuff that we're seeing tonight? Yeah, I have one question and I'm not seeing on the drawing. So I'm gonna to jump to the conclusion that the service station is gone. No, that's not true. No, not we proposed that true. last week. Um, no, we proposed that last week. This, yeah. th th it wasn't in this drawing here, but if you wanna go back to our last what, week's what, uh, where, where is it? Um, where would it be right on this there. drawing? Oh, right there, in, okay. All right, thank you. It, and it's more defined in the last drawings. Okay. No, I was just, what I, what I was looking for is trying to get my head around how big that, now that we have a, this gorgeous drawing that Joe provided is how big that service station is in relation to everything else. Is this the first time you guys have seen a print? Because that was brought yes. up in our first meeting. Then you guys uh, missed it because in our very first meeting, this was proposed with measurements. So I'm, I'm sorry if uh, some of you guys didn't get that, but that is on our first week's there. application. It was definitely there. Was it? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yep. No worries. That's okay. Because I had a bunch of questions about it being an open space where people were going to be standing and having cocktails, and it's not. Right. It's a server area, and it's set and up. And that's a valid question, for sure. Yep. Um, on the pergola, so it says cedar. So the, the full pergola, everything about the pergola is going to be made in cedar? Yes. And it's going to be left natural. It's not going to be painted. That's correct. Okay. And so that that um, that color that you chose will kind of blend in with that natural. Yeah, it'd be a natural, yeah, natural product. Yeah. So Bryce, I just wanted to make sure there aren't any overhead lights over the service area. No, there will be just as little light. Lights on that's the correct. Pillar. Okay. And then I was wondering 10 feet, I guess maybe another drawing had it, but I was wondering for like mass, where does it come on the, um, if we were to try to compare it to the building, to the restaurant itself, how, how high is 10 feet? Does it go above the windows, the first floor? Cause that doesn't seem to like 10 feet there. Oh. No, is there, in our uh, conceptual drawing, there's kind of a relationship between the building and the patio. Can you, I don't know if you can pull that page up. I'm trying to think what, in, is it in this package, right? In this original? Yeah, it's in that package that we're looking at. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the. It doesn't really show your build. This is a conception. This is your, this is conceptually of your building as far as I. Well, I think yeah. that you can get an I you can get an idea of it though because the stairs are there. Mm. Well, you can get an idea because that wall is six feet tall, and then there's another four feet to a a pole. Yeah. Of lights. All right. Thank so you. If you. Go back, like if you go back to the last one, you see where this those stairs are. I think that mm. that gives you a good idea. Actually, if Kim could go back to one of the earlier packets the first picture has that picture in there right i mean i've got it but yeah i, I have it i just wanted to make sure you want me to look for the no it's a, i mean it's a good question i think um it just isn't what in what we were looking at tonight it's not in that material I don't know how high the windows are on the first floor. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't either. 
You got about a four foot foundation almost, or three and a half, and the windows for sure. Probably five. The windows are right level. I would imagine the top of the first uh, window. Price. Yeah. If you yep. if you stand on the ground, you can't look in the window, can you? Uh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. So those windows are at least seven or eight feet off the ground yeah. to the bottom. Yeah. Level. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, good point. Yeah. I'm six five. <laughs> I was gonna say if you can't look in, nobody can. <laughs> not, I'm not a normal size human. <laughs> Bryce, uh, Chris here. Above average. Does yes, anyone Chris. else have any questions? Yeah, yeah Chris. Chris. The last meeting, I was just curious as to whether um, more ornate or matching um, string light poles were ever considered that might closely match the front porch uh, look to kind of soften the transition of old house to modern looking seating area. Um, I was think that... we may have actually talked him out of doing anything more ornate because we were hoping to look past them without seeing them. Okay. I didn't, I didn't get might, that part. I, right, I don't want to speak for you, Bryce, but I think that we, when we talked about that, we were talking about less is more. Um, you know, I certainly, if. if yeah, I think I don't. Feel that more is I did more not. That. I did not consider that, Chris. Okay, I just didn't, I didn't know if there was a conclusion and there was, so that's, okay, thanks. Just curious to see where that went. Make sure we weren't missing anything. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you very much for coming in with all the additional information. I am really um, happy about the fence going away and um, not being necessary. And for the plantings instead, I think it'll soften up the corner a lot and give you some a little bit of privacy too, um, as well as privacy for the neighbors. So I think that all, that, all of that is good. And um, I like the change of the fencing on top of the back wall instead of the new product. I think the using the black fencing um, again will disappear more, especially with the plantings as well. So, and I appreciate all the measurements and the extra detail that we asked for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, hearing no other questions, I'm going to ask if there's any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against, or Kim, if we have any additional letters from. I don't have addition any additional. Have. I have no additional correspondence from here, but I will look for hands that are up. So if you are watching and you wish to comment, if you drag your cursor to the bottom of your screen, all the little things pop up. And one of the things that pops up is raise hand. And that's how Kim will know that you would like to have a comment. Or if you're just on the phone, start talking. <laughs> <laughs> Unmute yourself and start talking. Um, no, I don't see any. So very good. Well, um, thank you very much. We'll move on to application 700621 the application for 396 Main Street. You're muted, sir. Again, if you go to the bottom okay. of the screen. There we go. There you go. There you okay. go. Very good. I, I'm, I'm Roger Kutu with Renewal by Anderson. Your business address, please. Oh, yeah. oh, we got it. One, uh, 10 Reservoir Road, Smithfield, Rhode Island. Okay. And is the homeowner on also? I don't believe so. Okay. So tell us about the project. Tell us what's there now and what you're proposing in its place. Okay. What, what we did is we're proposing to change seven windows uh, in the home. <laughs> there, were, there were windows changed out in the home several years ago. I don't, I don't know exactly what year. Uh, what we did is we went like for like of what they did last time and what is there now. Um, we're gonna do them all as insert windows simply because so we're not changing the integrity of the trim on the interior and the exterior. So the, they're just, the, sat, you're just doing sashes. Correct, correct. This is Eileen Bollier, I'm on the phone. I'm oh, uh, hi. 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 Hi there. 
And you're the homeowner? Yep. Okay, great. I'm sorry, you're doing sash replacements or you're doing whole when the whole box is getting replaced? We're doing we're doing sash replacements. We're not going to change the interior and exterior trim. Are you putting a box into the hole? Correct. There's a frame that goes inside. Yes. Okay. But the, the exterior and interior trim does not change. Thank you. I believe I, I, I we sent you some pictures. I think with the uh, yes. with the number yep. window on there. Yep. Great. Uh, there are there's the there's one uh one there are two which is window 101 and 107 which are in bathrooms and the only difference is those are obviously tempered glass uh the other the other five are all in bedrooms exterior white interior white uh, and they they have no grills uh, window grills, so they're not, they're, they're going to uh, be like to like. So that one there, that, okay, that 101, yeah, that, that picture there depicts you, they're kind of buried in the trees a little bit, but that's 104 and, and 105. Those are both in the master master bedroom upstairs. Um, if we click to the next picture, uh, we'll see 106, which is also, that is the, the master bedroom as well. Uh, that's around the corner. Now that I believe, I mean, if you can help that, that's on center street, correct? That's a center street look. Oh, Howard Avenue. 106. Howard Avenue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Howard and Avenue. then the next one is the other side of the house. And that's where, uh, 10, the, the 101 is in the bathroom yeah. so that is tempered glass and the other two 102 and 103 are in a or in a bedroom and then 107 is the downstairs bathroom and so you indicated that you had replaced a number of windows previously and those so the ones you are replacing now are not the same windows there are other windows that you're replacing right yes and did you, are, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say the, the specs are the same as those. Yeah, I have a lot of windows. I can't afford to do them all at once. I know. We, we generally prefer to approve them all at once. And if you do them over the course of a couple of years, that's okay. Um, and did you, I apologize, I don't recall your name from Renewal. Did you right. do the last project? I did not. But it's the same company, right? Yes, it's the same company. Uh, it was a different representative. I'm, I'm, I'm just, there are only seven that you're replacing. So how did you choose these particular seven? It's just the windows that needed the most. And in my bedroom, I get cold. So I wanted to uh, replace those sooner rather than later and the bathroom windows I can't open right now. So I'd like to open them with the new windows. Okay, I think we've seen these windows. I think I don't have any other questions. Okay. Anyone else on the commission have any questions for the applicant or the contractor? None here. Hearing none. Uh, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 7007-75 Center Street. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Paul O'Doherty uh, from PK Windows, a uh, contractor. And uh, Peter uh, Zawinski is also uh, here. Can we hear you, Peter? Hello. Hey. Mr. O'Doherty, could you give your business address for the record? Yeah, uh, well, I'm on, I'm on uh, 34 Mile Road in West Hartford. 
Okay, and Mr. Blanky. Um, and are you the homeowner? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Tell us about your application, please. Um, I, I can start. We're uh, we're replacing windows. None of the none of the curved windows on the top are being replaced. We're replacing uh, all the ones with the very similar window. It's going to be a um, a Woodwright uh, 400 uh, Anderson window, and uh, the look's going to be pretty much pretty much the same to it. Um, the uh, I think there's aluminum uh, storms in there that are that are going to come out, so that's going to be an, an improvement of the look. Uh, anything else you could add, Peter? Uh, just to say that the existing windows are original to the house, which is to say nearly 95 years old, and uh, it can be drafty in the winters, and some of them um, are difficult to open in the summers. So replacing these windows would be a major convenience for us, and I think they would improve the look. As Paul said, uh, we would be eliminating those alum aluminum storm windows that you can see there in the center of the house. So what's difficult for me on a house like this is you have those beautiful sunroom windows with the arches. Um, which obviously cannot be replicated with the product you're proposing. So then you're going to end up with these two products. And I imagine the installation of these new windows, we have seen these windows before um, with varying success in their application on installation because we end up with glass loss because of the extra edging. Um, I'm going to use poor terminology that Vasek is going to fix for me but you end up with more trim showing or more of the new window frame showing all the way around when you put them in. Um, how do you propose to deal with that? So uh, th this particular window that's going in there, the, uh, the way that the, uh, the way that the trim goes, there's, there's a lot less of that than, uh, than most of the uh, replacement windows. And uh, uh, Vasek probably can uh, uh, attest to that. So the and, and the material is it looks you know a lot like a painted window. It, the, the, this does not at all look like a replacement window uh, when when it when it goes in there. Well, I mean Vasek will comment on it further, I'm sure, but <laughs> it will it will look like a replacement window. <laughs> yeah, You're the target tonight. Yeah. Because yep. the glass will be different. You know, I'm, I'm sitting in front of my bank of windows from 1923. And right. the glass is certainly different, especially when it's on the same plane as the glass in those beautiful arch windows. Plastics are normally quiet. Yeah. No, I, I don't know what he's doing right now. I can't see him either. I'm, I'm, right I'm looking up Anderson Wood right windows. Yeah. Now, Paul, did you put so, these when you did the windows next door in the center street the, home? The windows at next door, uh, we did at 71. And there's a very similar thing where the sun porch uh, is, is, you know, is there. And to be honest with you, the look is, is just fine and, and then blends in, you know. Well, I interestingly, that's the house that some people use as the example of not liking how they went in. Oh, okay. no, that's across the street. This is the one that's, that they proposed, you know, uh, Harvey Majesty. Yeah. Did you go with the Woodwright or did you go with the- we, No, we went with the Woodwright. Originally we had, originally we had the, uh, uh, the Harvey Majesties, but we changed them to the Woodwright just to, to get that, that better look out of the deal. <coughs> And, and and they do blend in the uh, you know the the simulated divided light on that is is a lot more the chamfer is a lot more detailed so that uh, you, you you're getting a lot better look 
out of it, in, in my opinion. I, I have to say that it may be a better look, but um, I stood out there and you've got beautiful windows um, with delicate muttons, um, a lot of glass, and that will be a change because they're replacement windows and they're not, they're, right. they're built to hold two panes of glass, et cetera, et cetera all the things that we know about it. So I'm sure you're correct that it's better than a lot of products out there, but it is still a replacement window that is a, there are a lot of them. Right. And that's really the feature point of the house, but thank you um, yeah, what I, what for bringing I might, in all the information. Right. What I might suggest is the, the five windows that are down below are, are narrower. What I might suggest is doing those as new construction. And uh, the windows up top uh, above that are, are, are wider so that, uh, you know, that th those could remain with the replacement part and still look perfectly, you know, like it, like it belongs there. Then you'd have three windows. <laughs> you'd have Pardon? upstairs, you'd have, no, you'd no, have well, upstairs, no, the no, five it, downstairs, it, and the porch though, right? It, so you'd have they're, they're, they're gonna be all the same, they're gonna be all the same company and all the same window. It's just the, uh, the five that are, are right below there, you know, next to the arched windows would, would, would you, you wouldn't have any glass loss. It'd come out looking, you know, pretty much identical to that bottom. And then, the, then, you know, the rest of the windows in the house, I don't think would, would be adversely affected by doing those as a, uh, as a replacement window. Thank you. That's thank you sure. for putting that idea on the table. That might be a good solution. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, does not, anyone else have any comments or questions for this applicant? It's it's a pretty good. I mean, Mr. Doherty gave gave yeah. us very good drawings that were sub, that were uh, provided by Anderson. So that. Will tend to answer a lot of the questions I think that we may have. Um, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you very much for coming in, um, both of you. Uh, anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 7008, the application for 120 Hartford Avenue. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Very Thanks, good, well. welcome back. Thank you. So Michael Pareto, 120 Hartford Avenue. Um, tried jumping on earlier with the unmuting button of the proposed plans at the Charles. And I just wanna say, I do love the look of it um, for what it's worth, but uh, couldn't find the unmute button fast enough. So apologize for that, but, That's okay. but anyways. Thank um, you. So looking to do um, a fence at, uh, at the house. So uh, I guess I can walk you through if you guys have the drawings there. Or, just some cut sheets of what it is, but it's Cape Cod Fence Company, um, which I know they've done a couple of fences in the neighborhood already. Um, so the front really is about a 45 uh, foot long, um, five foot high uh, fence, privacy fence. Um, and then the rest of the perimeter will really be a two split rail um, fence around, around the property. Thank you very much for the detail that you provided and um, importantly, the plot plan, because um, that gives us a good idea. It's obviously a, the fence is a beautiful fence and we appreciate, you know, the high quality, um, high quality products that you're using. I personally have a little concern with the front placement um, because I think that, it, and maybe, you've considered this just bumping it back a little bit. It's so forward on the main yeah. house that it actually will block that beautiful side door from view. So that's actually part of the reason why we went forward. Um, so uh, the further <laughs> back it goes, the hill actually comes up a bit. And so the further back it goes, it actually blocks more of that porch. And we were trying to, pre to prevent that a little bit. And then we thought about behind the porch, um, but thought it looked really awkward where the placement of the double windows right behind the porch. How about behind that, like towards the back of the main body of the original building? 
Um, the thought there was just the, the beautiful little play space there. Um, there's also this really nice cherry tree that we we're trying to wrap and keep inside the property line with that uh, with that fence. Um, so that was that was the goal. I can't see that. The cherry Can tree. The current picture of the that was not really on my radar to be honest. So if you go to the first page I submitted, I tried inputting like a, a little picture of a tree of where it's located. But right behind there, and that what's now cleared out bits, it's uh, a little more to the right. Um, it's right in that little mass that we cleared out now. Um, it's a very, very large cherry tree. <laughs> <laughs> One that makes me a bit nervous, but I want to at least keep it <laughs> for as long as we can. So it's like really directly on that line. So that's why we tried doing it is we want to keep it forward right to wrap around the front of the cherry tree. I didn't, did anyone else, does anyone else have a sense of that? Or does anyone else share my concern for the front placement? Or am I, I the I, only one? I know I share your concern. Okay. Yeah, it's a little, a little too forward for me as well. Yeah, I just think, um, you know, the goal with this house, um, and I mean, you're doing a beautiful job and we've been really Thank excited you. to see the progress. Um, but the goal with this house was always to really try to maintain that the front portion of the building to the extent mm -hmm. that's possible. And I think it would be a shame to put a big fence right in front of that side door. So right actually, the photo that you have right there, you can see um, the brownstone sill there on the outside, the five foot uh, fence um, and the placement is basically halfway between the front of the house and that brownstone sill. Um, and so that was the placement. And it, it really goes right at the top of the brownstone so we can still see it. Um, and that's how we were trying to, to make it work. And to, you said, to your point, make sure you can still kind of see the, the, the side porch there. So Mike, okay. Mike, what you're saying is the fence will reach the bottom of the sill? Correct, yep. And so if I'm standing on the street, uh, how much higher is the bottom of the fence than to say the sidewalk? Is That's there a a, is there a rise there? It is. It's pretty significant too. Um, I would, a couple of feet maybe. If you're on the street, if you're on the no, sidewalk, I'm, I'm maybe. The, if I'm on the sidewalk, probably about a foot. Okay. If I had a, if I had a guess. So, what I'm trying to wrap my head around is, if I'm standing, at, how much of that porch am I going to lose visually? with the fence there, if it reaches the bottom of the windows. Yeah. I guess the answer is I'm gonna lose the bottom of those columns. You, you will, you will. Yep. You will. Um, and if the, if the fence was say a foot shorter, I would simply lose half, the, half of that bottom of the columns rather than the whole thing, but that's, yeah, I, I would. You still don't have the full porch exposed at that point. I, I would guess, be willing to guess the same. You probably lose a portion, maybe about half or so, like you said, of the bottom portion of the of yeah. the column. So, I guess I'll ask: Is stocking fence the best best suggestion for that area? I mean, I know it's what you're proposing, but it's going to block a good, good part of that beautiful side of that house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd rather stockade. So if the option is to have to move it behind the porch, I'd rather do that first. Um, uh, just from more of the privacy factor. I mean, really, to be quite honest, it's, it's primarily for the kids and, and a little bit of privacy. Um, and if, if not, uh, uh, if not for, I'll, I'll call it a safety concern, um, probably would just wrapped around the two split rail all the way around the front. Um, but we really wanted the, the privacy um, safety factor with the, with the stockade fence. I wouldn't even really be thrilled with the split rail up at the front of the street either though. Like it just, no, no. that's really, that's a backyard fence. You know, it's not a, a picket front yard fence at all for yep. me. I don't, so I don't know if I need to come out or if other people need to come out and see because I, you know, I don't, I'm 
sensitive to that tree issue for sure. But looking at where the little tree is drawn in on the plot plan I have, I, I just don't understand why it can't be, why it can't start at the back corner of the main body of the house and run across that way. Like you would typically see most fences, um, you know, a stockade fence like that. Because the rest of it, I think, is fine for everybody. I think it, it's just that front section being so close to the road and its location and proud of that side entrance that's right. so lovely. It's a horizontal run of 45 feet. You know, very, even mm -hmm. though it's only five feet, it, it's, it's lower than most. It's just Would that run from that corner that you're talking about, Jen? Is that also about and it gets past your cherry tree? But you mentioned something earlier. That's a side yard you utilize for play. Area, yeah, it's like mentioned. yeah, it's kind of like right, right off the side of the porch. We're thinking just can can have a little side area for the kids to play. And um, I don't nice think that's gonna. I don't think it's gonna do it for <laughs> me when you have that massive backyard. <laughs> the backyard. That area. That for flat one ground. acre uh, yard. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, mean, I would. I guess we'd be open. I'd have to think through a little bit of kind of putting it behind the porch. I'm just worried about the, the what it would look like um, with the columns of the of the porch and the fence running behind it. Um, I was really worried about how that might look. I'm not be saying honest. right behind it. I'm saying back yeah. to the back corner, to the corner. of the house. Yeah. That section. You know, leave the leave that whole facade for the for you to be able to see and put the fence at the back corner of the house. Because it is a long stretch of pretty stockade fence. Yeah, it just, It's just not an appropriate placement of that fence for this piece of property. It just really isn't. You know, um, this is a real jewel that we're so lucky to have in the hands of a private homeowner that's really taking great care of it. Um, sure, it sure. be a practical fence, um, you know, ruin the front facade like that. It just isn't, a, it's not an appropriate placement at all, I don't think. Yeah, you agree, but, Okay. And so just to clarify, when you're saying the back corner of the original, original, or in addition of that little back space that was with the, the that porch. Back that, was corner, that back corner of the main body of the house is what yeah, I'm... Yeah, just below the roof line there where, yeah. where, okay. where this cursor is now. Can you go back to, is there a way to see back that side angle of photo if you had it there? Just to make sure I'm right on point with you all. Bring up the plot plan, uh, Kim, if you could. Because the, 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 like the, there was that, originally that little uh, office that was there that we extended back to push back the house to make it a little bit larger. And so you can kind of see, if you zoom in, you see that dotted line just before the red line? That was the original, the very, very original, before they added an addition years ago. Um, that's where the roof line is, is right there. So it's of a, the main by of the main by of the house. There's a tiny and then there's step that in inside there, the corner. There? Yeah. Well, so, sorry, one more time. Go Is ahead, there a Jim. tiny step in right there? It's not, it's it's all flat, um, mm -hmm. but there's like this side angled roof. Um that was a porch and in, in a little office area at one point. I wonder if I have right. I mean, I think I'd be fine with it. So it would be the original, it would be that roof line, if you if you go that way. That but it wouldn't be to the line. very correct, but it wouldn't be all the way to the back corner. Right. It's probably about probably about four feet, maybe. In between the bank of the two. There you go. There's the single. There, there you go. There's the angle right there. Right. The only concern is we do have, and this was something that we were looking at we'll cover up at some point, but the uh the air condensers are right there. So we have to think about exactly where the placement would be, but that would be my recommendation maybe is there instead. Okay. I mean, then you kill two birds with one stone if your condensers are on the back side of it. Yeah, you know, that's one's, one's, right, one's under, so that was, that was part of the other plan. <laughs> one of them is actually under that double window and the other one is right to the right of it. 
So I could probably sit if I can hide one if I go between the two. But I won't be able to get both. Those haven't come before us yet though, right? Uh, <clears throat> I think they did. Um, I hope they did. The road. So Jen, keep this in mind. Yep. If the fence goes right behind the porch, the fence at the porch level will be hidden by that bench. It's going to be lower than the than the top of that bench. Right. I, I still think it's going to be awkward. What do other people think? Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I can't see that fence being up. I think it's a more natural line for it to be not bumped up against that window. So now you're looking out well, that window, yeah. you know, to have it along the drop down from the first roof line, you know, where the, there would be a natural sort of, even though it's not stepped in. It kind of looks like it should be, but it's not. Yeah, 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 so. so you're, but the original, so you're saying that original tire and the roof line, right? That's just yeah. between Correct. those windows? Okay. Right yeah, there. like where the natural line of that building, the Second back story. wall is, yep. okay. parallel with and the would, back wall. And would you, would it, would, do you have a, so if we wanted to push it all the way back to that back corner, would that be an issue either? Would it, or would you be okay with that as well? Where the, in that picture where that cursor is right now? Yep, yep. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. That would be even better, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Also, I mean- The further just, it starts back, the better it is, yeah. Yes. Just, just seeing this picture here with that old tree, I assume the fence, it's hard to reestablish a fence once it's been there a long time, but. I assume the house and the fence are going to outlive the tree. And when the tree is gone, it'll still make sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good point. I don't know. That tree's really old. You never know. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, if, if you if you yeah. go around the tree and then the yeah, tree's right, gone, right. you know. Right. right. Okay. Okay. All right. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? No, great job on the property. Yeah, Looking thanks. Good. I can't wait for my tour. Thank um, you. We're getting close. We're getting close. <laughs> yeah, don't let a fence block your hard work. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much. Anyone Thank from you. the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application, uh, our fifth application of the night, 7009-2, and the application for 16 Church Street has been withdrawn by the homeowner. So we will jump ahead to 7010-2161 Garden Street. Hello. Hey, Matt. Matt Welcome. Gove. Welcome. Name you? and address? Yep, Matt Gove, uh, Gove Restoration, 70 Main Street. Is the homeowner here too, Matt? I'm not sure. I didn't see them. So I don't think so. Okay. All right, tell us about your project. Yeah, so uh, we were contacted to um, replace some of the, well, not some, most of the windows at this house, all with the exception of the porch. So I think there's 33 windows in total. So our, right now there's <clears throat> uh, aluminum storm windows on all of the windows. And um, we're proposing to, to completely eliminate those storm windows. Um, the window setup has a unique sort of um, molding. It's not your standard 908 casing. It's like a, it has slightly more detail to it. It's, it's pretty interesting. And I didn't realize this until I really looked closely. There's some layers of uh, stain and, and whatnot that had been built up over time. And it started to flake off and I, I discovered that they had this this trim. So they had actually talked to me about just putting in flat trim. And I, I talked them out of that because I think the, the trim detail is, is pretty nice on those windows. Um, so we're proposing to remove those storm windows and put in the Marvin Elevate in a bronze color. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, we're gonna have a full screen and um, the SDL bars are gonna be seven eighths of an inch, which I did measure those um, on the house and they are seven eighths. And for the porch, they're 
proposing to paint those windows to match the bronze um, windows that we put in. So I don't know if you guys have any other questions for me. Matt, in the application, you said something about the installation, the window at the sill is going to do something. Yeah, so it's it, Vasek, it's an interesting, it's an interesting setup. It's almost uh, um, the, the um, typically window trim like casing goes down to a sill. Yeah. Right. In this case, the sill is the brick bottom that we're dealing with. And what they did was they have a really, if you look at any pictures of the house, they have a very sizable um, storm window expander yeah. on, on the storms just to cover up everything else. So I, I thought with this, it would be great to get the window to set right behind that brick mold, which is what I'm proposing. And we would have a small lower profile sill, so it, would, um, it wouldn't stick out over the brick. I want the brick to be the focal point there. So the brick, as you can see, you have those that, that horizontal sort of sill line there under each window. So that's still gonna be sort of the most visible um, part of the, of the window sill. So are those then the original windows? I believe so. I didn't look at each window. Um, it's it's possible there there's there's been an, a little bit of stuff redone on this house over the years, from what I can tell. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some kind of pieced in stuff in there. But um, I, I'm I'm assuming they're mostly all original. Yeah. So Matt, going back to your application where you wrote up again, the, the trim and that. Yeah. Uh, the last sentence of that first part says, no exterior blind stops will be visible. So right. basically you're, the box that these windows are coming in, the, the frame is yes. gonna be totally hidden behind the brick mold? Um, it, if it's not all completely hidden behind the brick mold, there will be some exposure to the sides of the brick mold, which Marvin has what they call a frame expander. And I don't know if you're familiar with what the frame expander is, but it helps to, um, I'm sorry, Vasek. I don't, I'm not familiar. It helps okay. hide the thing, right? It does, yeah. So it actually looks a little bit more seamless. You can actually see from that, that's the interior view of the window right there. Yeah. But you can see it is a, it is a narrower um, sort of profile to that, to the window frame. It's still an inch on each side, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's about, it's, about an, it's about an inch, which I'm hoping to hide a bit of that behind that um, brick mold. Okay. I mean, obviously right now, if you look at it with the storm windows, we've got well over two inches of oh yeah storm window frame that's that's there but i think when you this house or any other house that is being proposed with replacement windows is when you look at a house and it has storm windows your brain says it's storm windows and then you discount the rest of it mm -hmm. when those come off and you just see the sash but you see the sash plus a chunk of the trim around it, i.e. the frame, then your brain tells you, oh no, it, they didn't just replace the, didn't just remove the uh, storm, Store, yeah. they did a whole replacement window. Right. I believe the measurement too, from the old jam to where the sash actually begins, not the glass measurement, yep. where the sash begins. Of course. It's about, an, it's about an inch and a half. Yeah. Matter of so fact, that's- a lot a lot of that inch and a half is is tucked behind the brick mold measurement. Okay. Yeah. Which on houses that don't have brick mold, that makes it a lot tougher to hide. Yeah. yeah. Remember that next time you come see us with a regular house. <laughs> without brick without brick mold? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, most, I mean, 
brick mold aside, exterior trim in general, that's that's what you're trying to tuck the window behind, right? You're that's the goal. That's the goal. Yep. Are these windows the old counterweighted windows? Um these windows these windows I don't believe are the old counterweighted windows, which, so I may be, I may be speaking out of line. I, they're not the old counterweighted windows. I don't think, and I don't know if that has to do with the brick or not, but I, I, I do know that when I was looking in those windows, I did not notice the window weight pockets. So okay, I don't think that they are. And the glass is uh, closer to newer glass. It's not the old wavy active glass, or it's definitely not. It's definitely not that old, super wavy glass. No. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Do any other applicants have any questions? I'm sorry, commissioners have any questions for the applicant? Thank you for all the detail as always, Matt. Appreciate sure, it. Thank you. Okay, hearing none, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor against this application? Hearing none, I will take a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting, please. I'll make a motion. I'll second. second. Claire, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, we will, the motion carries, we'll move on to the public meeting, the application 7000-21, the application for, of course I've lost my list, application for 161 Main Street. I'd like to make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Um, I do love plant, plantings to soften up the, uh, the setting. Um, I think you know, looking at the material lists, um, I'm happy to see the pergola is being made, you know, being put into a, a solid wood product, cedar. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty well buttoned up plan and uh, I think it'll be welcomed in the district. I think our additions, um, I'm happy to see the pergolas back in. I think it's appropriate for this era building and it helps tie the project to the building. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that we don't have to deal with the perimeter fence anymore either. Yeah. I, I um, go ahead, Claire. Go ahead, Chris. No, you go ahead, Chris. No, I, yeah, I'll go on that same vein. Um, the only thing I really don't like about it is, uh, you know, the four, the, the topper on the four foot wall by the parking lot, maybe, the necessity for that extra two feet on top of that but um the rest of it I, ideally i think at grade you know it's hard to believe that there's a two and a half foot slope there but you know the part that will be closest to the home or to the restaurant building is going to be the lowest or almost at grade and it will be softened i i think the plantings are great not so sure about the boulders either but they'll be okay they'll blend in um uh, but uh, well presented and I, I appreciate the effort they put into it. Thank you, Claire. So you all heard last the last meeting, um, my feeling about the materials. Um, the stack stone is a modern material and something that we've all seen in lots and lots and lots of applications. We've seen it at the malls and we've seen it in modern restaurants. It's gonna look modern um, and, and jarring to an extent um, it's not that it's aesthetically displeasing, it's that it's not necessarily appropriate or the best material next to an iconic house in Main Street. I also think we need to be very careful in thinking we've got lots of great ideas coming along Main Street uh, and we might see more and more of that material. I wonder, you heard me ask some questions. I wonder if it might be possible to soften some of these walls with some greenery. For instance, um, on the parking lot side, they've got some grasses. Those grasses are gonna be gone for most of the, not most of the year, but a large part of the year. We could stipulate that along the parking lot side, there'd be evergreens that would soften 
the look coming up Center Street, where you're really going to see a lot of that stack stone wall. Also, at the back of the area, as you look, I don't know how to articulate it, as you, as you stand on Main Street and you look towards the pergola and the patio, the, there's the wall, but on the left-hand side, the lawn, it's, the, it's where the fire pit area is. Again, there are grasses there that are not gonna be evergreen. I wonder if, if stipulating some, some, some tall evergreen material there would also soften that large wall. You're just gonna see greenery there um, and not, not the tall wall. Um, obviously, I think it'd be lovely not to have that knee wall. It's another large stretch. It is low um, and it sounds as if it's gonna be a problem to soften that. But perhaps we could stipulate um, those other two areas, the, the parking lot side of that wall and the front side of that wall behind the fire pit area for some four to six foot tall evergreen material there. I'd like to share just my, yeah. my thoughts ahead, on this please. tonight. Um, I, I really appreciate the fact that the, that fence is going. I actually went back and took another peek at the fence material on Kim's porch. And it, that aluminum fence was rather shiny and um, the, the light must have caught it as the light was setting. And I thought I wasn't a fan of that sh bright, shiny aluminum fence, even though it was black. And um, if that, if we're going to have that fence, perhaps we should think of it as sort of a, a matte finish rather than that shiny aluminum finish. I, um, I, I'm also thinking of more evergreen plantings rather than, I'm not a fan of the grasses. I think the grasses are lovely. I think they're very modern. Um, if you just look at them at West Farms Mall, you, you see right away that they are modern. Um, I think altogether, this looks like, to tell you, I like the design. I like that it's organized. Um, I like that everyone sort of, I, I like things structured. Um, so I like that, you know, the diners are one place and, and, and you have that space where you belong. And I, and I like that very much because I think this is a place where we belong in Old West. So then you sort of have a space to do where you what you want to do. Um, at the same time, I think it looks like, um, I don't think it's sympathetic yet to the building. I don't think the materials are sympathetic to the building. I don't. I I know that I spoke about the the materials in the wall that are not sympathetic to the building, and I I understand you're taking a stance on that, and and I understand that they are real rock, and I, I've made that choice myself, and I'm telling you it, it was a mistake on my part. Um, so I'll just I'll just lend you that little piece of advice from my from my front porch to yours. Um, so um, I, I like what you're trying to do. I like that the lighting's been changed a bit. Um, I, I'm not a, a fan of that aluminum fence. I'm not sure that you need it at all, um, especially on that stack stone wall in the back. I think Chris is right, that two feet fence. You know, if you put a nice evergreen planting on there, I think you'd be, um, it would be much, um, more historic looking. I think it would be more, it, it would be pleasing. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the, the big bushes, the big dried grasses. So um, I think you're, I think you've, we've come a long way. I think you've really worked hard with this and I appreciate that. Um, and I, and I can't wait to see it when it's done, but those are just my thoughts on it. And I think that there are certain things that we can do to make it complement the building and the area that it's in. I'm not voting tonight, but um, I just wanted to step in and say that I completely um, echo the sentiments of both uh, Claire and Kathleen. I think they've uh, said all the uh, appropriate things about the various building materials as well as um, the uh, various types of landscaping. Just one thing to keep in mind with the landscaping, it has to be maintained. We can say it has 
to go in. We just have to, I don't know what the mechanism is to keep it in force, so to speak, or if a landscaper mows over something by accident, is it replaced? Um, it's just, it's a variable. Once it's in, it doesn't mean it's coming in forever. So that, that's all I'm saying. You should, I don't know if you should rely on greenery so much. It should be a balance. Right. right. That's all. Yeah. When it's when it's stipulated as part of a commercial landscaping plan, they do have to maintain it. And generally, when we stipulate something on uh, homeowners to shield something that we don't want to see, like a condenser, we usually stipulate ever, to be maintained evergreen. Um, and so that would be the case on this application as well. Mark and Chris, as the people who proposed. Would you be um, interested in modifying your motion, um, withdrawing your motion and making a new motion to add that uh, stipulate in lieu of the grasses along the center street side and along the back wall, um, the plants be evergreen at least four feet tall? Before we go there, could I say a bit? Yeah. Uh, Apropos grasses versus evergreens, the, the drawings that were submitted uh, by Bryce and Joe are wonderful. And they show all these beautiful little perfectly sized uh, plants. And from what I've seen, grasses do tend to, are, can be maintained in a reasonable size. Uh, my, from what I've seen in my experience with evergreens though, is to keep them small and manageable and confined to a small area is you have to be relatively aggressive with the trimming. And I think some of the things that, some of the objections that were raised with the grasses, with the uh, materials of this contemporary look would just be, duplicated by trying to maintain shrubbery to a very tight confine. Uh, evergreens growing wild, get big, get unruly, but they look fitting into the general landscape. But if you try to do that in tight confines, you do have to whack the hell out of them and they're gonna look contemporary. So I, <laughs> I think you're basically robbing Peter to pay Paul here. And you're gonna end up with a similar set of issues. Um, as far as the, again, contemporary looking stone that is proposed for the knee wall and for the back wall, uh, the knee wall is gonna be small. It's not gonna be particularly visible because there's gonna be a fair but a lot of plantings surrounding the entire property, both on the main street side as well as the center street side. Uh, so you're gonna be looking through or over some shrubbery to see the next round of retaining whatever wall or, you know, if we stipulate that they have to put plantings in front of it, then they'll put plantings in front of it, but it's, A two foot wall is a very minor thing in the scheme of things, especially when you're talking with a building of the size that this is. Uh, your eye is gonna be drawn upward to the mass of the building. It's not gonna be drawn downward to the two foot wall that's surrounding a patio. Uh, furthermore, the patio with a pergola there that's nine feet tall is gonna overwhelm any inclination to focus on a low wall rather than something that's taller and more pronounced. That's it. So Vasek, let me just speak as a, as a, with a little bit of gardening experience. Yep. Um, what you do, the way you, you don't have to continue to whack at, as you say, so elegantly at plants, is that you choose a cultivar that's the right size. So you're not putting, you know, a, a, a juniper or, or a, an evergreen shrub that's going to grow to be 15 feet in a space that you want to be four or five feet. Um, just as Bryce's, um, as the landscape plan 
shows an ink berry in the front that's going to get to be a certain size. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you can, you, that's an easy fix. Um, well, I understand it's determinate height, mm -hmm. but evergreens for the most part aren't particularly determinate in their girth. They are. I mean, are they? just, they just, they just are. You can choose how wide and, and et cetera. You can get them the pencil thin. There's a, a wide variety out there. And that's part of why I think we would leave that up to the landscaper um, and the owner, you know, and the applicant to decide what plant material they're using. Um, in terms of the grasses in a contemporary look, I mean, I like grasses. I've got them. I don't have a concern about that. It's just that they're not year round coverage. Um, they're not going to break up the wall year round. So my thought was to come in with something that's more evergreen that would then break that up more again year round, just in two areas along the parking lot in that, that area, the front of the wall towards Main Street that's at the back of where the um, fire pit is. Yeah, the fire pit. So in the back of my mind, I think about what this is going to look like when it's dark, because as we all know, in outdoor seating in Connecticut, you get probably about three, maybe four months a year, right? So for the most part, this place is going to be relatively dormant. So I think of the dormant plants and what's going on out there. This thing is, you know, with, with the exception of the time that they've had the tent in the parking lot. Um, that will be a pretty quiet area for probably three quarters of the year. It's just too damn cold to be out there. Mm -hmm. So looking at the knee wall and the dormant grasses and things like that, it's, 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 it's in hibernation. And I think I'm absolutely okay with the look of the dormant grasses that won't be cut back until the spring. And then they'll be cut again and then they'll start to refurbish and, and grow. And I, I, I will say, I don't, I don't know what their landscape plan is. Usually you cut the grasses down. So they're not even, they're not standing during the winter because the snow just whacks them to pieces. Mm. Um, I, I actually think in the winter, I think you're going to notice the detail of the wall less in the summer because you're going to have so much other stuff going on. It's in the winter when nothing else is going on and distracting your eye that you're going to see that. And then on the back side of it, that big, you know, oh, big, that four foot stone wall, you know, most of the time, well, I guess shouldn't say most of the time, most of the day during act active times where the place is open, that parking lot's gonna be pretty well full of cars as it is now. You're not gonna see a lot of that wall because the cars are gonna be blocking. Now, if you're up- Aren't the cars parked on the other side? I thought they were parked more on the- North side, not on both sides. No, it's equal spaces. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so let, let me ask you this on uh, that wall to the patio. Is there dirt? I mean, is there ground there or is it bricked right to the wall? They would have a choice well, about that. Yeah, there's space. No, I mean, where, where, them, where your planting is going to go in is what I mean. Where, there's where space for them to plant there. There is. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. Don't have a print up. It looked like it went right to the wall, frankly. Some of those drawings. Well, they've got grasses there now, Chris, so there's room. So, so yeah. there's a two foot space. You're talking about something that's going to grow four to five feet in height. I don't and know. I'll, what I'll defer to you. Is. What's that? I don't know what I don't know what that space, how wide that space is. And well, I would imagine they've got some play in terms of where they put things. I understand that, but then remember, I mean. Vasek mentioned as well too, it, it's the width, the height. Yeah, you can regulate height and, and no doubt you can. I mean, there's beautiful hedges out there and um, boxwoods though are, as you know, there have been a lot of blight in New England on boxwoods as well I too. wouldn't recommend boxwoods no. for anybody. You'd use right. green gem, but again. Um, but what, what it goes there, I mean, what do, does he lose five feet of, of, of patio there? And, 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 it, and it really is not that large a space. The only thing I would ask, you know, what's the width of that wall? How, how would you substitute something for that two foot fence? What, what, what could you get in there? I'm not sure what you're but, talking about, Chris. No, 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 that's not Kathleen that's not what we're mentioned talk. We, oh. we asked when we addressed, uh, again, and, and that merely is more of a matter of opinion to me, the four foot retaining wall that protects the diners to the parking lot, 
it's going to have a two foot extension match of the balance of the, the fencing that is on the property. What is with, what, what are we suggesting there? Could you ask us, Jen, if to modify, that would be the what only I, stipulation what I, I would asking, ask. What I was asking for was just greenery to look at on the other side of that wall, there's proposed grasses. To the parking lot side. To the parking lot. Correct. And okay. along the center street side, there's grasses to request a three to four foot evergreen planting instead. Um, in, in front of the wall. Right, because there, there currently is some evergreen planting on the north side of that parking lot that runs along Norm's house there on Center Street. Yep, they've got Arborvitae there. Yes. Correct, we're not, yeah, we're not. So you're not, you don't want to address that two foot extension is what you're saying? No. Okay. Then your question you asked of me, I'm not, I would not, it's Mark's, I yeah. would have to withdraw my second, but I, I, I don't see anything to change my uh, motion. Okay, and, and Mark, so uh, let's call the vote on what we've got then. I think so. Okay, um, any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Two nays. Uh, three eyes, the motion carries. The application is approved as submitted. Moving on to application 7006, application for 396 Main Street. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Second for discussion. So I think in this particular location, um, although we prefer to see all the windows approved at the same time with the same product, we've already had some windows replaced. And because there are large windows, very large windows with no light divisions, I think that this product on this project is appropriate. I guess my only question is, is do we, do we put in a stipulation just to approve this window for the whole house. Um, I'm happy to do it. Well, um, it we do have like, a decorative window. I think I'd yeah, like to some, stick with the some ones. decorative yeah. windows. Yeah. I'd like to stick with okay. what we've got. There are a couple decorative windows. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The application is approved as submitted. Application 7007, the application for 75 Center Street. I'd like to make a motion to approve with the following stipulation that the front five windows be new construction, wood uh, new construction. On the first floor? On the first floor, yeah, the first floor, the five continuous windows uh, between the sun porch and the front entry, to be specific. I'll second. Can you repeat the stipulation, please? Sorry. So my stipulation is to prove as submitted with the following stipulation that the front five windows uh, be of new construct new construction wood windows. Is that adequate? If no, it would be the first floor five. Yeah, first floor windows window first. Be new construction windows. Correct. Yes, facing Center Street. And you said wood, and does that mean wood on the exterior as well? No. Yes. Oh no. Whoa. But <laughs> oh, the five. No, no. Okay, so new construction windows, but the fiber same materials. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. And Mark, you second. I did. Okay. You know what you're seconding. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I think that it's a good compromise um, to have those windows be new construction because I think that those are the ones that are concerning because in the narrowness of the window, um, too much light is going to be lost because of the narrowness of the window and that's solved with the new construction on the first floor. Um, so keep in mind that with the drawings that Mr. Doherty submitted, you're gonna be losing three and three eighths inch for every window that you put in with it, unless it's new construction. And while the second floor front facing windows might not be that much of a concern, 
the dormer windows on the second floor aren't particularly big. No, they're narrow. They're shorter. You're right. Both driveway shorter. side and neighbor. Yep. Yeah. Uh, fortunately for the uh, replacement windows, the top to bottom sides, you're not going to lose that much. It's the sides. It's on the sides where you have the tracks for the that hold the sashes that chews up a good chunk. So. If it, if it was my house and I was doing this, I'd say do new construction on the whole thing just to keep the look, but that's me. We, we have approved this product in this area. Um, yep. in my opinion, um, it, they were, that was not a successful um, installation. Any other comments? Anyone? Who is the second on that? Mark. Mark. Thank yes. you. Now that I know what I'm second. <laughs> all the all those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Nay. Two nays. The motion is approved with the stipulation as noted. Application 7008, the application for 120 Hartford Avenue. I'll make a motion to approve with the stipulation that the stockade style fence to the right of the house shall be placed parallel to the back edge of the main body of the house the line running from the second floor or at the very back edge of the house at the homeowner's choice. Second. So I'd be, I think it's a, it's a great fence. It's um, appropriate put back further from the street. Um, not so as not to interfere with the um, view from the street of the house the main body of the house in that side porch. Um, and I think that giving them the option to run it from the natural line from the second floor on the main body of the house or the back edge of the house um, gives them options to sort of place it where they want and satisfy what looks appropriate for the district. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, application 7009216 Church Street was withdrawn. Application 7010, the application for 161 Garden Street. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Second. I think that this uh, window um, applied as described by the contractor is gonna be appropriate in this particular situation. Um, the dark color will help it blend in. Um, the replacement of the muttons are like for like, and we're not losing old glass in this situation. Um, I think it's going to be an appropriate replacement window in this particular case. I agree, Jen. I think the information that we've been given by the contractor and the specific details that he's given as to how he's going to install this one to make it appropriate, um, whereas it may not be appropriate in other installations. Agreed. Yeah, even with storm windows on original windows, sometimes that's more appropriate, but I think it's okay with this house because it's going to be hidden. I agree. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, moving on to the approval of minutes from November 9, 2021. I think we have enough people. Uh, with our usual thanks to Linda for her excellent job and to Kim for keeping us afloat. Um, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? 
if I can get in on this. No one's you weren't there. You weren't I'm there. Out. Someone else. Oh, can I? I don't know if I'm. Yes, yeah. you were there. Okay, sure. Um, and Claire seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion to approve is, uh, carries. Other business. Do we have any other um, members of the public or anyone that you're planning on having for us today, Kim? I don't have any in the lineup, but I'll look for a hand if anybody has any public comment. And no correspondence? No correspondence. Great, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll Second. Thank you everyone. As always, all those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Everyone have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you very Happy much. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thank you. Mark, I'm waiting for my um, wine recommendation.